day 503 this was of the Trump administration. And Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani is escalating his public attacks on special counsel Robert Mueller and his team in an effort to discredit the entire Russia investigation. Earlier today at an investment conference in Israel, Giuliani said Mueller's team is trying hard to frame the president of the United States. They are a, a group of 13 highly partisan Democrats that make up the Mueller team, excluding him, are trying very, very hard to frame him, to get him in trouble when he hasn't done anything wrong. While in Israel today, Giuliani also sat down for an interview with Pat Robertson of the Christian Broadcasting Network. During that interview, Giuliani went after former FBI Director James Comey and said Robert Mueller needs to take control of his team. Comey worked for me in the U.S. Attorney's Office, and Mueller worked under me in the Justice Department. I'm very, very disappointed in Comey. I mean, Comey, I think, is the real villain of this whole thing. I think in Mueller's case, it's more... Uh, he's not taking control of these people that work for him. And they're going around starting all these new investigations. Uh, he's got to have the discipline to put a stop to it, or we're going we're gonna to have to do everything we can, including some things that I don't think we'd want to talk about right now to try to, you know, try to appeal to have it stopped. Well, that was ominous. As Giuliani and Trump keep up their constant attacks on the Russia investigation, at least one more Republican is dismissing. The president's claims that the FBI planted a spy, perhaps more than one, in the Trump campaign for political reasons. Earlier today, and in what has become a rare public moment for him, House Speaker Paul Ryan said he agreed with Congressman Trey Gowdy, who said just last week the FBI did nothing wrong in using a confidential informant. I think Chairman Gowdy's initial assessment is accurate. I have seen no evidence to the contrary of, of the initial assessment that Chairman Gowdy has made, uh, but I want to make sure that we run every lead down and make sure we get final answers to these questions. Speaker Ryan also pushed back on the idea of President Trump pardoning himself after the president wrote on Twitter he had the absolute right to do so earlier this week. Mr. Speaker, do you believe that the president has the power to pardon himself? Uh, I don't know the technical answer to that question, but I think obviously the answer is he shouldn't, and no one is above the law. Meanwhile, we saw another act of clemency from the president today as he commuted the sentence of 63-year-old Alice Marie Johnson, who was serving life in prison for a nonviolent drug conviction. Today's commutation came after Kim Kardashian showed up at the White House last week and brought Ms. Johnson's case to the president's attention. Peter Baker of The New York Times points out just today, quote, the president's intervention was contrary to the policies of his own Justice Department that has enacted since he took office. Attorney General Jeff Sessions last year ordered federal prosecutors to pursue the toughest possible charges and sentences against criminal defendants, reversing President Barack Obama's efforts to ease penalties in nonviolent drug cases. The White House released a statement on today's commutation that read in part, Ms. Johnson has accepted responsibility for her past behavior and has been a model prisoner over the past two decades. While this administration will always be very tough on crime, it believes that those who have paid their debt to society and worked hard to better themselves while in prison deserve a second chance. One wonders if that is going to be universally applied. Let's bring in our leadoff panel on a Wednesday night. Philip Rucker, Pulitzer Prize winning White House bureau chief for The Washington Post. Guy Lewis, a former U.S. attorney who has worked with Robert Mueller, James Comey and Rod Rosenstein, among others, while at DOJ. Also with us, Michael Schmidt, Pulitzer Prize winning Washington correspondent for The New York Times. And Elizabeth Bumiller, Washington bureau chief, also of The New York Times. And at this point, we are compelled to point out that both Elizabeth and Michael have emerged as two of, let's just say, the reluctant stars of Showtime's documentary series, The Fourth Estate, which chronicles a year in the life of The New York Times as it covers the first year of the Trump administration. We're happy to have you all on with us tonight. Mr. Rucker, since your paper is underrepresented just for the purposes of this conversation, <laughs> I'll begin with you. How many minds do you think are being changed at this point by this doubling down by the president on social media and his attorney in places like Israel? 
Well, I think the president and his attorney are hoping a lot of minds are being changed uh, here in the United States. The point of what Rudy Giuliani uh, said in Israel today and the point of what he and Trump have been saying for several weeks now is to just muddy the waters with this Mueller probe, to politicize it, to put it in a partisan lens and make the American people uh, view this as a partisan witch hunt, to use the phrase that the president uh, likes to use over and over again. It's a pattern that he's been doing uh, in his political life, but also in his life as a marketer, as a businessman, as a real estate uh, mogul. He, he, in some cases, will exaggerate, some cases tell things, say things that are not true to play to people's fantasies, to make them believe sort of his own reality that he creates uh, and, and win in the court of public opinion. That's what he's trying to do here with this Mueller probe and change the way the American people view the Russia investigation. Michael, let's talk about exactly that. There's no one out there to correct the record. So I have a two-part question for you. What of this notion of 13 registered Democrats working for Mueller? And secondly, how do they balance the noise deficit, the PR deficit? Rudy Giuliani's out there every day. Uh, Mueller's team has this steely discipline, part of their sense of duty to remain quiet. Mueller is different than Ken Starr. He's not out there doing media. He's not on the courthouse steps. He's only put out, I think I know, of two statements. Everything else has been in court filings. So his voice has essentially come from those documents and from former federal prosecutors on cable television defending him. Besides that, you have Giuliani with his megaphone and the president with his Twitter account that have caused some real problems for Mueller here. They do not acknowledge that Giuliani has changed the public discussion. He has had some significant impact. So if you're Mueller, how do you push back on that? How do you change that when you are, appear to be so limited in what you can do? On the Democrats, the issue there is that Mueller would have to have done a litmus test on the folks he was hiring to know their political leanings, and that would have been illegal. So the folks that he has working for him are the folks that he could hire. There would have been no way to determine whether they had given money to one party or another. Uh, Guy, I know some uh, career uh, Fed types who are uh, uh, insulted uh, by this uh, line uh, of, of, of argument by Rudolph Giuliani. They say in their own defense, when you call a cop, do you ask for a police officer by party affiliation? Everyone in the Justice Department held some political opinion, but the definition of being a professional is casting that aside and doing the best job you can on the legal matter. That, that's right, Brian. It, it's funny because it's this is not a tactic that those of us that did this for a long time have not seen before. I'm, I'm always reminded of Carl Sandburg's famous quote about lawyers when he said, uh, when he said, if the facts are against you, argue the law. If the law is against you, argue the facts. And if the facts and the law are against you, pound the table and yell like hell. That's what he said, and I think that's what we're seeing Giuliani do. And, Guy, is Mueller so agnostic there's not a television set on in that office? That staff doesn't hear when Rudolph Giuliani says something like they're trying to frame the president of the United States? Oh, Brian, they hear it. They hear it. They talk about it. And in some instances, one could argue that um, kicking the lion, kicking the tiger that's actually bearing down on you is not the best tactic. But remember, and I agree with Michael 100 percent, that the uh, know your audience. The audience right now is not 12 members of a jury in a box in federal court. That's not what they're arguing. That's not who their audience is. They're, they're worried about the idea that a report's going to come out. They've already decided that he can't be charged as a criminal defendant in, in this case. But they're worried about a report that's going to come out, or an impeachment report, that report going to Congress and Congress acting on that report. So every single one of these statements, uh, all this media blitz, the Twitters, everything, it's all going to those members of Congress who might vote on articles of impeachment. Elizabeth, one of the wonderful things about this four-part documentary series a lot of us have already seen on Showtime is we get to see you as 
a manager, as a motivator, as a leader, as a veteran editor, as a journalist fresh from the field, and so many assignments and postings yourself. So it's, it's with that in mind that I ask you, how do you uh, begin to cover the story just today? And of course, this falls to the foreign desk, so that's too easy an answer, of a former New York mayor now serving as counsel to the president on foreign soil, telling a, a, an Israeli audience that uh, the special counsel in the United States is out to frame the president. How do you interpret that in contemporary language? Uh, well, first of all, I used to, I covered uh, Rudy Giuliani when he was mayor of New York. Uh, so, I mean, I covered the, uh, his midlife crisis uh, two term, two years of his eight year term. Uh, so uh, this is not that unfamiliar to me and to those of us at the Times who also covered him. Uh, look, you cover it, you cover it, you cover it straight, but you also interpret it the way the, the rest of the panel has. This is part of a sustained attack on the Mueller investigation. They are obviously worried, Giuliani and the president are very worried about what will be in Mueller's report, which we think will go to Congress perhaps in September. We're not sure. Uh, and this is just a sustained attack that we will see through the rest of the summer. And yes, the, the audience is Congress, because if Congress, uh, if the House goes Democratic after November, there is a very good chance there will be, um, there'll be impeachment proceedings. So that's what's going on right now. This is not going to stop. We're going to see tweets every morning in the evening. And Giuliani is, is uh, Giuliani has kind of found a new, a new, um, a new way of life, you know. He's uh, he's made for this. He's uh, he's good at this. He's obviously enjoying himself, and um, and uh, you know, stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.